Welcome to our 236 weekly webcast. Now, if this is the first time you're joining us, welcome. If you've been with us before, welcome back. So the way this call works is this is an AMA, like you see on Reddit. You can ask me anything. You can ask me business questions, career questions, finance questions, investing questions, any questions you have to help you take your company, your portfolio, or your career to the next level. Now, I've got a couple of important announcements to make before we get started today. Uh, the first one is, Today is the last webcast this month until July 27th, because on July 27th, I'm going to be doing this webcast from Rwanda, where we built uh, our school. Uh, so again, after today's webcast, there's no webcast next week or the week after, but there will be a live webcast uh, from Rwanda uh, again on Thursday, July the 27th. Um, and so as many of you know, the profits for what I do. Uh, go towards building schools overseas. So I'm going to be doing this from uh, Rwanda, this this call, along with Vital, who's one of my, my best friends. Should, should be a lot of fun. The next announcement I have to make for you all is a big one as well. Um, I just released a new course along with Luca Anison. Okay. And actually, you'll, you'll get an email about it likely later today uh, when it's officially released. But what I want to do before we get started today is I want to talk a little bit about the course and just play you the first lecture, let you know what's included in this course. Luca Anison, who's a good friend of mine, uh, he's based in Serbia. Google developers called him one of top, the top 150 uh, machine learning experts in the world today. And we all know that machine learning is a big component of artificial intelligence. And so Luca flew to my house. He was on this webcast a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and we recorded the course together. Uh, I just finished editing it this week. Again, it's going to be live later today, and you'll get email about it. Please keep typing your questions. I see there's a bunch there. Before we get started with me answering your questions, what I want to do is play you the first lecture from the course, just so you can understand what's included in this comprehensive course. Okay, see you in a bit. Jeff Bezos said that artificial intelligence is the renaissance or the golden age of technology. Welcome to the Complete Artificial Intelligence and ChatGPT course. This course provides you with an in-depth understanding of artificial intelligence and its applications, and the impact it has on the various industries. Here are some of the many topics we will cover in the comprehensive course. There are 16 sections in this course covering all AI topics, and no prior technology or business experience is required to take this course, with the exception of the optional section 15, where we use Python to discuss OpenAI's API. Now, whether you're a business leader, a decision maker, or somebody just curious about the world of AI, this course will give you the necessary knowledge and tools needed to leverage the power of AI in your organization. My name is Luca Anesin, and I teach artificial intelligence and technology courses. And my name is Chris Haroon, and I teach business, Excel, and investing courses. And we are partnering in this course to explain how to use artificial intelligence to take your career or your business or startup to the next level. Now, here's a book version uh, of the course called the Complete Artificial Intelligence Book that is only available to students that take this course. Now, you can download this book from the current lecture. Since this is a very long and very complete course, also attached to this lecture is an index sorted alphabetically of all AI topics and terms discussed in this course. We'll be updating this course regularly as new AI technologies are invented. Now, I'm so grateful that Luca flew in from Serbia to my home here in the San Francisco Bay Area, area to record this comprehensive course because Google developers called uh, Luca one of the top 150 machine learning experts in the world. Now, Luca has a PhD in applied artificial intelligence. He also has an executive MBA and a master's degree in computer science and data science. And Oxford University also selected Luca as one of the top 2000 Serbians alive today. And of course, we know that Nikolai Tesla is also from Serbia. Uh, and we'll, we'll be discussing Tesla's AI in their cars as part of this course. He also has more than 10 years of computer science work experience, including his first tech company that he founded when he was 16. And Luca has founded several other AI companies and has, an ex has had an exit as he recently sold one of his companies. And Google also separately, they recently purchased a company where Luca was leading the development of the core AI algorithm, 
Now, I've worked in VC venture capital here in the Bay Area for years, and Luca is the smartest engineer I've ever met. He's also very, very humble. And so Luca is not only a machine learning uh, and, and an AI expert, but he's also an expert in Python, cloud computing, and many data analysis tools and, and applications. So Luca, thank you so much uh, for creating this comprehensive course uh, with, with me. It was my pleasure. Please note that there are three ways to take this comprehensive AI course depending on what you want to learn. There are A, B, and C tracks. If you are interested in learning everything about AI that this course has to offer, then watch A for A all track. If you only want to learn basic introductory topics, then watch B for basic track. And if you want to learn only about ChatGPT, then watch C for ChatGPT track. Then spend most of your time in sections 3 and 4 where we discuss ChatGPT in a lot of detail. Now, at the beginning of each video and quiz in square brackets, you'll see either A for the all track in square brackets, or you'll see B for the basics track in square brackets, or C for chat GPT in square brackets. Now, the rest of this first introductory lesson here will introduce you to what we will learn together in this course, which can help us decide if we want to select the A for all track, B for basics or beginner track, or C for chat GPT only track. And if you want, you can skip the rest of this lecture here, meaning the introduction lesson, and start watching lessons for the A, B, or C tracks. ChatGPT is a revolutionary AI tool, but it's just a subset of AI. This course has 16 sections, and we are currently in section number one. There are many exercises in this course to help you use many of AI tools that we teach in this course, and take your career or company to the next level using AI. Now, starting in the next uh, lecture, meaning in section two, we're going to discuss an introduction to AI, as well as machine learning and deep learning from scratch. And machine learning and deep learning are subsets of AI. And section two is a top-down overview of AI. And then sections three through, three through 16 are bottoms up, meaning we go into depth on how to use many AI products and how to implement AI in your company or take your career to the next level. And throughout the comprehensive course, we will use many fun props like you see here to learn about the current applications of AI using many real world examples for case studies, including Tesla uh, and Netflix. And we'll talk about the fascinating worlds of computer vision and natural language processing and what the positive impact AI will have on every single industry. We'll also discuss the challenges and limitations of AI, and we'll talk about all job positions in the data world. In section three, we will learn how to get the most value out of ChatGPT, including more than 1,000 prompts to use with ChatGPT that we made for you for this course. And the 1,000 prompt is available to download in the section three. In section four, we'll discuss how to use ChatGPT plugins like Zillow, Wolfram Alpha, and many others. And plugins allow ChatGPT to expand its reach, so it's not just limited to its knowledge from the training data set, but external data as well. Like the Zillow data set, or knowledge of mathematics from Wolfram Alpha, or even flight information from Kayak. And OpenAI, which is the creator of ChatGPT, allowing companies to connect their products directly to ChatGPT using plugins, is just like the moment that Apple introduced the App Store with the iPhone. And more and more companies will jump on the opportunity to create a plugin for ChatGPT, and all of a sudden, many more people will be able to interact with it. And we want to help you work smarter and not harder with plugins when it comes to using AI. In section five, where we discuss alternatives to ChatGPT, including Google and Microsoft AI products. Why should we learn about alternatives to ChatGPT? Well, because there are certain features that ChatGPT alternatives have that you might want to use in order to take your career or company to the next level. In section six, we discuss how to use Microsoft Excel and machine learning. And as we mentioned, machine learning is a subset of AI that involves developing algorithms to learn from patterns of data. Now, instead of programming rules, machines learn from experience just like humans do. And we're gonna use Excel in section six to do machine learning and there will be many exercises that we will complete uh, together. Now, why should we bother using Excel for machine learning purposes? 
because it's relatively easy to do so as Excel can quickly analyze data and provide charts, regression formulas, and advanced statistical analysis as well. Also, if we start doing machine learning with Excel, it's so much easier to understand how to interpret or use machine learning in the cloud and with other applications. And if you don't have Microsoft Excel, what you can do, if you want, you can search for free trial of Office 365 and download Excel, or you can subscribe to Office 365 during the time you take this course. And we will also teach you how to add Microsoft's free data analysis plugin during this section so that you can do regression analysis with us, which will be a lot of fun. In section seven, we will discuss how to create incredible images using artificial intelligence. Image generation using AI has been so disruptive that many graphic artists that used to charge more than $40,000 to make video game images has seen their business basically fall off of a cliff. We'll learn how to use top AI image products like DALI and MidJourney, and we will do exercises together. Why are we going to discuss using AI to make images? Because, as a society, we are much more visual now, which is why Meta bought Instagram and why products like Pinterest exist. If we learn how to quickly and easily make high-quality images using AI, then we can take our personal brand or corporate brand to the next level with social media and we can make much more impactful our documents, presentations, websites, designs, and much more. In section eight, we'll discuss useful AI tools that can help you with creating voice clones of yourself and tools that can help you with creating digital avatars. And we'll do this by learning how to use DID, Resemble AI, and 11 Labs. And this is really important to learn because generating voices that sound almost exactly as we do can be very useful in the business environment. We could generate samples of our voices and more and use them to narrate marketing campaigns, product reviews, and even create tutorials. We can even use these technologies for customer support on the phone or on the internet. And as dangerous as these tools can be, from an ethical standpoint that is, they're gonna be used a lot in the future. And movies will be made with lifelike avatars, and we can create our own lifelike avatars in the future using AI to help us create promotional trailers or to advertise our companies. In section nine, we will be discussing what Ralph AI is and its benefits over normal ChatGPT. We'll also discuss using Kyber and other products to make music videos. In addition, we'll be discussing how to use ChatBase in order to create chat feature for your website. We'll talk about AutoGPT, which can generate text and code and help you automate a lot of stuff. And we will be discussing character AI, which generates human-like responses for many imaginary characters as well as real ones. As with all sections, there will be exercises to help us retain what we learned as well. In section 10, we will discuss using AI for business decisions. We'll talk about the role of AI in business strategy, as well as setting AI key performance indicators selecting the right AI solutions and vendors, overcoming challenges in AI implementation, compliance risks, monitoring of AI performance, and so much more. And it's really important to discuss these qualitative business strategy topics when it comes to AI, because implementing an AI solution can be an ethical and compliance nightmare if it's not done correctly. We also need to make sure that we are partnering with the appropriate AI vendors, which we will discuss and how to anticipate AI challenges before they occur. Now, in section 11, we will explore additional ethics and risks with problems with AI. Because failing to consider risks factors with AI can lead to negative consequences such as biased decision-making, privacy violation, and even harm to individuals or society. Now, in section 12, we'll discuss using AI in different industries, like in the retail and financial services sector, and also when it comes to marketing and supply chain management. In section 13, we'll discuss the machine learning project lifecycle. We'll go through all the steps that makes a single machine learning project so that you can understand and better anticipate the complexity and the scope of the future machine learning projects. In section 14, we will talk about the future of AI and next steps. Section 15, we'll be discussing how to use OpenAI's ChatGPT 
Application Program Interfaces or APIs to integrate the power of ChatGPT into your products. Lastly, in section 16, we will add many new AI topics that you can ask us to add so that in the long run, section 16 will be the longest section of this very comprehensive course. Thank you so much and let's begin. All right, uh, one more housekeeping announcement then I'll get to all your questions. Thank you everyone for your patience with me today. Uh, the housekeeping announcement is uh, for those of you uh, in my, my gold and platinum uh, MBA degree program, if you want to attend graduation, I think we're going to have about 100 people here in the Bay Area joining. What you can do is go to my website, haroonmba.com, uh, and then up here, uh, just go here and use the login we mentioned in class, okay, the password to, um, to get access to information. I'm looking forward to meeting a lot of you one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Okay. All right, thank you. And, and I do apologize. I think that video was a little bit long. Uh, I should have showed a, a more condensed version. Okay, thank you. All right, let's get started here. Uh, Andre wrote, uh, good morning, Chris. Uh, hey, bud. Can you point me to research data comparing the consumer-driven market in the global alcohol sales? Your MBA program has changed my life. Uh, take care and thank you. Thanks for that. Appreciate it. So whenever you want to do research uh, on a sector from a top-down perspective, what I always recommend doing is doing searches for consulting reports, especially from the elite consulting firms like McKinsey. So what you can do, for example, is this. Just go here and do a search on McKinsey Alcohol Markets, okay? And McKinsey is just one of many uh, great consulting firms but you'll be able to read all about their thoughts on the alcohol market. You can also do a search on Boston Consulting Group, uh, as well as uh, Accenture Rise to Work uh, and many others. And what I also recommend doing, if you're doing research on any sector, is look at the top five companies in the world in a particular sector and read their annual reports by going to sec.gov. Okay. All right, next up, uh, Gamar wrote, uh, hey, Chris, oh, it's been a while, man. Good, good to see you. Uh, you wrote, uh, my question for the day is, the gaming industry is going to have an economic bubble, question mark. Games are becoming popular as they are, and the industry has become uh, diluted. Uh, AAA titles are not living up to expectations. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, what I got to say about that market is that it's, it's really tough to compete in the video game market. Uh, innovation has grinded to a halt and that's one of the reasons why uh, the government is trying to block the Microsoft acquisition of Activision, ticker ATVI. Competition is good for consumers. And Microsoft was also blocked from trying to buy into it back in 1994 for competitive reasons. It's really tough in this market too, especially in the mobile market. I've noticed that innovation has really dried up. And one of the reasons is because Apple has included their own gaming platform for $4.99, $4.99 per month, which has really hurt innovation. And I think the DOJ is going to come after Apple for that reason as well. I have a lot of friends that have started video game companies. It's really, really hard to compete. Really, really tough. Yeah, I don't recommend anybody do it. Okay, uh, next up, uh, Carolyn, uh, my Silver MBA wrote, good morning, Chris. Uh, hope you and the family are, are keeping well. Thank you. Likewise. Good, good to see you. Okay, moving on to Durs, who wrote, uh, hey, Chris, what do you think about the future currencies and how the banks are going to work with the future of AI? Yeah, one company to look at closely is Bloomberg. So Bloomberg just announced something called Bloomberg GPT. And Bloomberg, for those of you not familiar with it, is a financial services IT company that has more than 40 years worth of data. The company was founded by Michael Bloomberg after he was fired by Merrill Lynch about 40 years ago. So take a look at Bloomberg GPT. Uh, I think they're going to be the leader in the AI market. Uh, when it comes to other uh, AI technologies, uh, when it comes to currencies, I think that future currency is less of an AI thing and more of a, a cryptocurrency thing. Um, now, I think what's going to happen very soon is the Securities and Exchange Commission that regulates um, uh, uh, publicly traded companies is also going to be regulating cryptocurrencies. It's going to happen soon. And what usually happens is whenever there's a massive financial crisis in the world, regulation comes six to 12 months later. In 2008, we were within 24 hours of bank machines not working. And in 2009, we got new regulation. The same thing is going to happen uh, with cryptocurrencies because of the FTX scandal last year. Now, what everybody is doing is they're watching the Southern District of New York uh, court case uh, where the government is coming after Ripple. 
And what Ripple did was they raised over a billion dollars a couple of years ago without filing a securities report. Now, cryptocurrencies, the good ones at least, are not regulated by governments, but they're regulated by the laws of mathematics. And so the bottom line is, I think later this year, the SEC is going to regulate all cryptocurrencies so that if you want to raise money through a crypto, you have to file first. And that's a good thing for consumers because before you invest in IPO, you can always go to, to sec.gov and read up on a company by reading the S1 filing that, like this for Meta, which was released back in 2012, this filing here. A lot of people are getting scammed with cryptos and people pretend to be me on many different social media websites. So if you ever, and try to ask for money. So if you ever see somebody with, with my name asking you for money or cryptos, you know it's not me. I got verified on Instagram recently uh, to try to stop this. Okay. All right, Prashant, how are you? Uh, Prashant wrote, um, apart from FA9 semester one, that's my MBA program, finance and accounting semester one, class nine. Have you covered financial modeling in any other classes? I'm really excited to learn from this, diff this difficult topic. Absolutely, yeah. I cover that in a lot of detail in the second semester as well. Okay. All right. Um, next up, uh, Adiposi from Nigeria, who's uh, one of my platinum students. Gra actually graduated recently. Great to see you. And the first time I met Adiposi online about a year ago, he had this prophetic quote. I'll never forget it. He said, with, with pain, you find your passion. And it's so true. If we ever have setbacks career-wise, or if we've been let go from companies, you might not understand it now, but you might look back years later and say, this was a great turning point with, for me. With crisis comes opportunity. When life gives you lemonade, or lemons, you make lemonade. So Adiposi wrote, how are you? I'm always great, thanks. I'm looking forward to my, my trip to Rwanda, uh, which, which I'm, I'm leaving there uh, to there next week. Uh, you wrote, I wish I could fly over uh, to meet you in Rwanda. Uh, since I can't make it to the USA for graduation in, in August. Thank you. And I, and I hope to meet you in person one day as well. Yeah. And I hope your, your wife is doing well. And I'd love to profile your company and your wife's company on this webcast at some point. Uh, Adiposi and his wife started a company called CEO, which is his wife's initials, uh, which makes high-end handbags in Nigeria. All locally sourced. Great products. Okay, next up, uh, Movid wrote, uh, Chris, how are you? And I'm happy to see you again. Likewise. Likewise. Good, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, and I feel bad for playing that video. It's too long this morning. I should have played just a shorter promotional version of it, but I'm so excited about this 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 AI course that, that I got out. Yeah. Uh, and, and special thanks to uh, Luca. Yeah. Okay, Amelia wrote, Hi, Chris. Looking forward to listening and learning more tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Jennifer, good to see you. How are you? Uh, Jennifer uh, is uh, based, um, you're from Nigeria as well. Uh, and also is based in the United Kingdom. She's starting this incredible hair products company. I'm looking forward to interviewing you as well uh, on my call uh, in a couple of weeks if you want to about your product. Yeah, God bless you. Okay, moving on to Mobit who wrote, what do you think about the dark web and why these websites always support underground markets in many ways, such as drugs uh, and financial criminals? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, the big precedent for that was Silk Road, uh, which was a, I think about 10 years ago, um, a, a lot of people were using the, the dark web to transact uh, in nefarious products. Um, governments regulate this stuff pretty closely. Uh, they investigate everything on the open internet. Um, and, and I think that when, when it comes to cryptocurrencies in general, people think that, hey, you can't be tracked. You can. Everybody can. In fact, if you make more than, say, 10K or have more than 10K uh, in online wallet, uh, such as Coinbase, it's tracked by the U.S. government. Coinbase has to release to the U.S. government the names of all of their clients. And the precedent for this was back in 2009 when the IRS and the U.S. government went after Swiss bank accounts uh, from American citizens. Yeah, there's nowhere to hide. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Catherine wrote, <coughs> hello, everyone. The new trailer is awesome, Chris. Thank you. I, I should have played the trailer instead, which is really short instead of the first lecture. But again, I'm so excited about this product. Thanks. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, Prashant wrote, uh, the average lifetime of companies is shrinking. 
Um, if you were listed in the S&P in 1935, the lifespan of a company was 90 years. Today, it's 18 years. Yeah, it's because of technology as well and price discovery online and cloud computing services like Amazon Web Services. Software is eating the world, as Mark Andreessen said, a great venture capitalist. And there's many other sectors that have yet to be disrupted by software. So I see that 18-year lifespan decreasing quite a bit. And I see a lot of rebalancing going to be taking place over the next couple of years in the S&P 500. I can go into more detail on that if, if you want me to. Okay. All right. Um, okay. And then Nintendo uh, wrote here, uh, what would you recommend seeing uh, in Silicon Valley? Yeah. For those of you coming to, to the graduation event um, in, in August, a um, couple things. Uh, number one, um, if you're curious about uh, about tech, I would go down to Mountain View to Google's headquarters. You can walk through it if, if you want to. What I would also do is I would rent a car and drive an hour north to go to Napa Valley. And I'd also drive an hour and a half south uh, to go to Big Sur as well, which, which is beautiful. Yeah. Okay, just be careful in San Francisco because it's a, it's a very dangerous city now. Yeah, it's deadly. And I hope we get a new mayor there soon. Okay. Um, next up, Moed wrote, um, how can machine learning in AI um, create wealth? Uh, please explain. Yeah, absolutely. So um, as you guys saw in the opening video there, which uh, again was a little bit too long, I apologize for that. Um, within AI, there's machine learning. And then within machine learning, there's a deep learning. Machine learning is the most widely used aspect of AI today. And the way that people use machine learning to generate wealth, and it's something I teach in the course as well, is they look for patterns in the data and they look to find different clusters, meaning different groups of data that AI can generate for you. What people also do with machine learning, you can do this in Excel and I teach you in the course, is you can do linear regression and multiple regression to find patterns in data. And hedge funds have been using this for many, many years. And I'll give you a great example. Uh, there's a hedge fund called uh, Renaissance Technologies founded by a brilliant man named Jim Simmons uh, who used to work for the NSA. He founded the company back in the 80s. And his gross uh, adjusted annual return since the 1980s in his hedge fund called Renaissance is over 60%. And what he does is his firm has thousands of Linux servers running in parallel using AI. And he doesn't hire people that are amazing at finance. He hires mathematicians. And what they do is they look for patterns in the data and invest that way. Now, these thousands of Linux servers are, are heavily guarded. Nobody knows what's in them. But I'll give you an example. And this is a simplistic example. Let's say it's raining a lot. Well, when it rains a lot, people don't go out to restaurants. Therefore, short restaurant stocks. That's a simplistic example. But the data coming into that would be weather patterns. And the data coming out of that will be shorting stocks. That sort of thing. So that's one way that, uh, that hedge funds use machine learning. Another way is through a process which I've used a lot called behavioral finance. And behavioral finance is something that was kind of innovator created uh, by uh, uh, Rich Dick Fuller uh, and, and, and Taylor. Um, and they won Nobel, P Nobel uh, Finance Prize for this about five years ago. And what they do is they look for patterns in the data to see which uh, executives in companies are selling shares or buying shares in size. And speaking of Activision, I met with Bobby Kotick, uh, the founder and CEO of Activision, many times over the years when I worked in the hedge fund industry. And whenever I knew or found out, and this is all publicly disclosed, that he was selling shares in size or buying shares in size of Activision. In most cases, the stock was up a lot a year later if he bought shares and vice versa. And the way that I did this was using AI or linear regression or machine learning. And you can do this in Microsoft Excel as well. You download all the transactions or you go to, to all the filings on sec.gov to see when CEOs or insiders buy or sell stocks. Then what you do is you download how the stock did over the past couple of years, and you look to see if there's a pattern. And again, you can use this, do this in Microsoft Excel using the Data Analysis Toolback plugin, which is free for Excel users, and you use linear regression to see if there's a pattern. Okay. All right. Uh, next up, uh, Liesl wrote, uh, hi, Chris. Hey, uh, I've done a lot of material uh, publish, publishing for Rwanda uh, when I was at Pearson, a big publishing company. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm partnering with McGraw-Hill to actually release a book called Finance Essentials uh, later this year. Thank you. Big competitor, Pearson. Yeah. Uh, 
And then you wrote, uh, do you need any materials like resources, worksheets, readers for your school? How can we help? God bless you. Yes, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. I'm going to be teaching in that class uh, live uh, later this month uh, when I'm down there for all the, the wonderful students in Rwanda at our school. Uh, please e email me at support at haroonventures.com and we'll set up a Zoom call together. God bless you. Thank you. Okay, and if you guys want to learn more about Project Magoo, you can go to Project Magoo, that's M-A-G-U dot O-R-G. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, and, and thank you. People have offered to donate. We're totally good. Thanks. I've funded the whole thing. We're, we're good to go. Thank you. Yeah. But when we build our next one, uh, maybe we'll take donations. And by the way, it's set up as a charity in Vital's name, not mine. Yeah. It's separate from my company. But that's why I do what I do. That's my purpose. Okay, uh, next up we have Adiposi who wrote, I'm really excited about the AI course. Thank you. Uh, I've been using chat GPT and other AI tools to do some pretty neat stuff. The next thing uh, I want to learn about is how to use Python to integrate OpenAI API and projects. Yeah, and in the 15th of 16 sections in the course, per the video you guys just saw, uh, we talk about exactly how to use uh, uh, OpenAI's API uh, with Python. And what I'm working on later this year as well, uh, and Luca's flying to my house again this fall, is we're going to be making the complete Python course uh, as well. And the way I'm going to be teaching that is similar to how I created the Excel course when I teach you about object-oriented programming, using a lot of props as well. And Adiposi, if you meet me in real life, I'm a tiny man yeah. with awful dad here. Yeah. Okay. All right. And Adiposi is an architect uh, by, by trade. I'm sure you've been playing around with mid-journey at DALI as well, the image manipulation stuff. It's cool. Okay, moving on to Eric. Hey, Eric, how are you? Eric wrote, I've been working at Topre, uh, which builds the frames for Nissan since December of last year. So I haven't been able to, to watch the uh, these uh, live web, uh, webcasts. I'm a, a projection welder, uh, but I need to find something else. Yeah, every job I've had in the past 20 plus years was an entry level job, but not engineering, uh, et cetera. Um, yeah. Yeah. So what I recommend doing is whenever people see a job opening online, and you want to change careers or get a new job, the chance you have of getting that job is literally one out of 250. So who gets that job? Well, it's the person almost always that knows somebody at the company. So these are the new rules. So what I recommend doing is make sure you have a rock solid uh, LinkedIn profile, which I teach about. And then I want you to network like crazy. I want you to get a list of 20 names of people that work at companies you want to work at. And I want you to network like crazy, as I explained in my courses, and get informational meetings and then bond with people. Okay, the first 10 minutes of, of any meeting, you should bond. Don't talk about business. And then don't forget to ask, right? Ask them, do you have an opening? Or do you know somebody that is similar to us? Maybe they went to the same school as us, whatever, that might be hiring uh, in that area. And I have one platinum student that graduated from my program years ago. And he said to me this, he said he grew up uh, in the ghetto. And he learned one thing which is closed mouths don't get fed. So you have to ask. Ask and you'll receive. It's prophetic. It's been true since the beginning of time. Okay. All right. Uh, next up, we have uh, Bakari, uh, who's who's one of my, my platinum students. Bakari uh, plays professional basketball. He got a full scholarship to University of Minnesota. He's six foot 11. He lives in France, and he's a great guy as well. Uh, Bakari wrote, uh, good morning, everyone. Hope all is well. Uh, how can AI... Uh, and a new startup entrepreneur do their financial model forecast. Thank you. Yeah. So what, what I would use AI for if you're using doing financial forecasts is this. Whenever you do a forecast of financial statements, the most important thing to forecast is revenue. And then for the most part, every other expense item becomes a percent of revenue. So what I would do is I would ask AI and always double check the data because chat GPT is quite often confidently wrong. I would ask ChatGPT or BARD uh, by Google or Bing Chat by Microsoft what the total addressable market is for a sector that you're looking to invest in or start a company in. Then I would ask also what is the compound annual growth rate expected to be. And once you figure that out, and obviously you have to do a lot more research than just that, then what you can do is figure out what percent of that market you think this company you're creating will get over time. And that becomes revenue. 
and the rest of your financial model becomes a percent of revenue, meaning your expense line items. There's many more steps as well. Uh, today at 11.20 a.m. during our weekly Golden Platinum uh, Office Hours call, please ask me for more details and I'll do it uh, live with you during the call over Zoom. Okay, moving on to um, next question is, give me a second here, guys. Ah, and by the way, if people paste in hyperlinks, I don't see it, it gets stripped out. And there's certain keywords that get stripped out as, as well. Yeah. Um, all right. Good morning, Kevin. How are you? Okay. Thank you for that comment about, about the course, Prashant. Appreciate that. Okay. Moving on to Eric, who wrote, about 70 to 80% of the people working at Topra, uh, the, the, the firm you're at that makes parts for Nissan, uh, are from Latin America. I've learned quite a bit of Spanish uh, since starting. Uh, also, there's about a dozen Japanese people, and I can speak some Japanese. Very cool. Hajime Mashite. The first big deal I, I worked on, actually, when I was at Goldman, I was a grunt, um, was the NTT Docomo IPO. And I was really good at photocopying, but this is the prospectus for it. And that was the biggest IPO in the world in the fall of 2000, or 1998, $18.3 billion IPO. I spent a lot of time in Japan. Okay, uh, next up we have Renvir from Mauritius, who's in my Silver MBA program. Great to see you, and I hope to see you as well during our weekly Silver call at 10 a.m. today. Great to see you. I hope your real estate company is going well. Moving on to Joseph, uh, who is in my, my May Platinum class. How are you? Great to see you. Okay. Okay, moving on. To Eric, who wrote, uh, some of the smartest researcher people that I follow have never owned a smartphone or a cell phone because they understand the health and privacy risks. I hope this trend towards uh, owning dumb phones uh, continues. Yeah, uh, and, and I have my, my biggest investor in my hedge fund, a uh, very high net worth uh, person here in the Bay Area. Uh, he was the exact same way. In fact, he limited Wi-Fi in his house as well. A lot of people are worried about the side effects. I'm not worried about it um, just because there's so many lawyers in this country. And I think if there were cancerous issues with, with cell phones, why not? We would have heard of it from now. Uh, my wife is concerned about it, which is why she doesn't keep her cell phone that close to her during uh, the night when she's when she's sleeping. Yeah, but she's sure. Okay. Uh, next year, uh, Re next up, Renvir wrote: a, a friend and I are developing a, a blockchain application that will allow people to verify their identity and then put the link in their social media bio if they don't yet have a verification badge. What do you think about this project uh, and how could I improve it? Yeah, I, I would say the biggest issue there is trust. You know, um, having people send you all their personal details, especially to a, a blockchain-based company, um, you'd have to get over that hump of, of having people feel comfortable with sending information. Maybe instead of sending all their person that, uh, personal information, like their social security or social insurance number, et cetera, they just send the last four digits, that's, that sort of thing. But I'm happy to talk to you about it in more detail during the Silver Call today. Thanks. Okay. Um, next up, uh, Emma wrote, uh, hello, Professor Chris. Hey, lovely to see everyone again. So inspired by what you're doing in Rwanda. Thank you. Uh, and then you wrote, thanks so much for the AI course. Uh, you're a special human and, and a gift to all of us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. God, God bless you. Yeah, uh, and the, the Rwanda trip is gonna be awesome. This here is is the, the helmet I wore when, we, when we, we, we made the first dig. Let me show you a couple pictures real quick. Of, of when I went there last, which was in 2021, uh, the summer during COVID. So you can always go to projectmagoo.org. And this this here, that's me with a hat. <laughs> when we did our, our first dig, uh, we have a big team as well. A lot of people helping us. It takes a village. That's my son, Andrew, who came with us. And this is when I met Vital back in 2019 at a Udemy event, actually, in, in Berlin. And we were being interviewed live. Uh, and what we decided on the spot we th I threw down a challenge and I said, we are going to build a school in Vital's hometown in Magoo in Rwanda. Uh, and, and we did it. Uh, it took me a little bit longer than expected. As Mark Benioff says, um, we tend to overestimate what we can accomplish in a year, but we massively underestimate what we can accomplish in a decade. Uh, you got to vocalize your goals as well. And if I was a quota carrying sales rep, I would be fired many times over. But here's my goal. Here I go. Within 10 years. I want to build a thousand schools and it costs about six figures to be, build each one. So it's really expensive, which is why I do what I do. Yeah. But I believe that education can solve all problems uh, in, in the world. Yeah. And you can watch a video here of, of Vital. And I can't wait to see him again uh, in, in, in later on this month. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, uh, ne ne next up, and Emma, thank you for that. God bless you. Okay, moving on to Mohammed Amo, who wrote, uh, hey, Chris, your, rec your recent student, how are you? I want to know what is your take on Maverick's protocol uh, and their coin and where you see in the long run. I don't know anything about that. I apologize. Yeah. yeah just be careful with crypto, though, because I think more than 95% of cryptocurrencies are absolute scams. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Eric wrote, um, there's a great movie coming out. It's about the famous woman who survived the Rwanda genocide. Uh, she's in the book called Live to Tell. Yeah. And, and I recommend there, there's a movie which really helped with awareness with respect to the Rwanda genocide called uh, Hotel Rwanda. Uh, I recommend people watch that. Um, and and I, when I was in Rwanda, I went to the genocide museum. Uh, my son, Andrew, and I went, we tears in our eyes. And underneath that museum, it's not a big museum, but there's 250,000 people buried. Yeah, it's tragic what happened in Rwanda. And it breaks my heart that the whole world didn't care. Yeah. History repeats itself. Okay. Okay, next up, Redveer wrote, I'm also helping my CEO raise money, but I'm having some issues convincing high net worth individuals. The project seems too risky for them. Uh, it's a stock trading, uh, okay, a stock trading app uh, that's going live soon. Uh, what do you think I'm doing wrong? Yeah, uh, I have to know a lot more about the business The business plan first. Now, in the uh, in the MBA program, in the third semester, as you know, there's a, a venture capital boot camp. I know you're registered for the MBA. Um, so I recommend watching the venture capital boot camp. It's based on my work experience starting companies and investing in companies. And write your full business plan because failing to plan is plan to fail. Yeah, write the whole business plan first. Um, and I'm happy to take a look at it today uh, during our silver office hours, uh, if you want to. You're doing the right thing, though, going after high net worth investors first instead of venture capital firms because the sales cycle with high net worth investors is very, very short, right? Uh, you might be able to raise capital in a couple of weeks versus with a venture capital firm, it can take months and months and months. And the best way to, to raise capital or to get anything you want in life uh, is, is by networking. Your, your network is your net worth. Relationships are always more important than product knowledge. Uh, and here's a book that you can download for free. Uh, it's a couple hundred pages called Networking to Get Customers a Job or Anything You Want. And what you can do to download that, if, if you guys want to, is go to my, my website, which is haroonmba.com. And if you scroll down uh, below my propaganda here, uh, you've got, uh, at least I'm honest, you've got this book that you can you can download. Okay. Okay. And Omar wrote, uh, when will the AI course be available? Later today. Okay. And for those of you in my, my uh, MBA program, Silver, uh, uh, Gold, and Platinum, you'll get it for free. Um, and join me on our office hours calls later today for Silver, Gold, and Platinum. I'll explain how. Okay, next up we have Eduardo who goes by Electronics Onsite. He's from Texas. Uh, his son is the second, I think number two now in the country in Taekwondo for his age group. Congratulations for that. Um, so Eduardo wrote, uh, hey Chris, do you believe in more in crypto since BlackRock publicly filed uh, the Bitcoin uh, ETF? Yeah, uh, I mean a lot, of, so BlackRock is the, uh, the, the largest financial services firm in the world. They have between five and $10 trillion in assets under management. Uh, they're a platform for every financial product, so I, I don't, I don't think that that would really change my opinion on it. Um, all the big uh, investment banks on Wall Street, as well, uh, have done a lot of work with cryptocurrencies through IPOs as well as through uh, investments, etc. Yeah. Okay. And Coinbase, actually, Fred Ursum, who I've met a, a number of times in my office, he's a he worked at Goldman. Uh, we didn't overlap when I was there. Uh, but um, but he took coin he he was the, the founder of Coinbase as well. And I think Goldman worked in that IPO. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Next up, Manas. How how are you for, from India? Always great to see you, buddy. Uh, Manas wrote, "Good morning, my dear mentor, Chris. Please hope all is well. Likewise. Uh, have you tried Threads by Instagram? Uh, if you do, you'll never be able to delete the account as it would delete your Insta account as." Wow. And then you wrote, that's the exact way. I've not, I've not even heard of that. Uh, now my social media stuff is, is taken care of uh, by uh, Jean Marco, uh, as well as Cassandra up in Canada. They are amazing. Um, follow me on TikTok if you want now as well. We're starting to do a lot more stuff on TikTok. Yeah. <clears throat> and less on YouTube. Okay. 
Um, and Amelia wrote, uh, how much will the course on AI be and where does one register? I'm really interested. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll send out more information later today on that. And thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, next up, uh, Eric wrote, uh, on days that it rains, go to the best restaurants. They're, they're always packed. Maybe you'll find a table fast. I remember when I, when I was a kid, I used to go to restaurants and I'd wait for a table with my family and they'd page us. They'd say, heroin party of six, heroin party of six. Yeah. And the way to pronounce my name, last name is Haroon. It rhymes with baboon. Now you'll never forget. Okay. Manas wrote, I'm a little bit worried about crypto markets because I'm not convinced and confident with the Bitcoin hype. And I believe it would fade as the Fed is going to hike more. Uh, and Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, in terms of Federal Reserve, so the Federal Reserve uh, signals to the marketplace uh, this week uh, that they are going to be raising rates. And I know they stopped raising rates for a month or two uh, and people thought, oh my God, this is great. Uh, there's no more rate, rate, rate hikes coming. But I think the reason why rates are going up is because the, the stock market, particularly the NASDAQ, is having its best, best start of the year since 1983. And so what that does, it creates a wealth effect. If everybody's net worth goes up, they feel more comfortable and they spend more. Spending more and spending quicker leads to more inflation. And I think that's one of the reasons why the Fed is going to be raising rates. Yeah, it's not a bad thing. You have to raise rates when, when times are good. Because if you don't, then when times are bad, you can't cut rates to stimulate the markets. Okay. But in terms of, of cryptos, I, I got to say, um, so a lot of people are, are, are concerned uh, that the US dollar might not be the de facto or risk-free rate or, uh, or lowest risk current, or currency in the world longer term. I think it will. I, I really do. Um, you know, the last government or last company, so to speak, to go out of business would be the US government. And, but a lot of people think that over time, the Chinese yuan uh, will be the de facto currency of the world. I, I, I don't believe that. Um, but this is one of the reasons why gold has gone up and certain cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin. A lot of people think that, hey, if the Chinese government's not going to buy as much U.S. treasuries in the future, maybe they're going to start buying a lot more gold and they have and they'll continue to do so, which is why gold has, has been a good investment. I own it. I always will. Everyone should have gold in their portfolio after you do your own research. And that's why digital gold, like, like Bitcoin, for example, has had a good dead cat bounce. All right. Uh, next up, uh, Mutaz wrote, uh, hey, Chris, how are you doing? I'm always great. Thanks. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I've been trying to finish the Silver MBA. And man, the amount of information is amazing. Thank you for creating the program. My pleasure. And thank you so much. And a lot of people in the, the Silver MBA complain because when they're taking the program, it shows that they're 40% done one day. And then the next day, it shows they're 30% done. And the reason is because I keep adding new material, tons of new material. Uh, every single year uh, to the MBA program. So don't focus on what percent you've done. Just focus on the quizzes. There's 100 quizzes. In order to pass and get the degree, all you got to do is get over 50% and half the quizzes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, and, and I'm happy to say that I'm going deep, deep, deep in the tech and I'm going to be adding a lot of tech stuff uh, to the program, uh, as you know, uh, including this stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, Next up, uh, Niraj wrote, uh, will the $99 subscription membership get access to the AI course uh, as well? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And if you're already in my MBA program, please don't buy the AI course because I'm going to include it for free in your program. Yeah. And what you'll be able to do uh, probably by, by tomorrow, if you're in my Silver, Gold, or Platinum MBA, go to the very end of the program and you'll find it there, how to access the AI course. Thanks. Uh, and of course, I'll be selling it as a standalone course as well. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, and then Eric wrote, for the past month or so, I've been building a web browser extension that helps people uh, shop at companies that share uh, their Christian and pro-freedom values. I'm hoping to capture a percent uh, of sales. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. And, and when you have it up and running, let me know. I'm happy to take a look here live uh, on this, this weekly webcast. Yeah. And there's this whole new philosophy on investing called ESG, which stands for uh, Environment and Social Governance, where people only want to invest in companies that do good things for the world. Yeah. 
Mark, how are you? Mark goes by Satones. He type, types all in caps. That's how I know it's you. And I always smile because I think of my grandpa. Grandpa, I miss you. I love you so much. He used to write all in caps to me. He wasn't yelling. He was just telling me stuff. Yeah. Uh, but Mark is based in Detroit. Uh, Mark wrote, uh, Brother, uh, how long have you um, have forest fires been happening in Canada? I'm in Detroit. Yeah. And we never heard of, of, of Canada catching fire. Yeah, it's rough. It's rough on the West Coast now, too. I have students in Vancouver that say there's issues there now as well. Now, the fires, as many of you know, are, are burning in, it's awful, uh, in, in Quebec, in, in Boreal. Um, and I believe it is because of global warming. In fact, this week, we had the hottest day on record for the world ever, ever. Yeah. So, and, and that's uh, since 1979, since governments around the world have been uh, have been uh, uh, recording all, all, all the temperatures globally. It, it's sad, man. It's, it's really sad. Yeah. 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 And, and it's one of the reasons why uh, the state of California, where I live, uh, is going to make it against the law to buy gas powered cars within a few decades. Yeah. So, and, and yeah. Very sad. Okay. Then you wrote, I, you wrote, I hope you and your family are well and safe. We're, we're great, thanks. We're, we're all good, yeah. Okay, uh, next up, T wrote, hi, Chris. Uh, I'd like to move uh, to my current role uh, to a different team. And it's been only a few months since I joined. Should I tell my current boss after I get an offer from the different team? Ooh, that's tough, yeah. I've done it before. When I worked at Goldman, I, I changed divisions. Um, and it was a bit contentious. Uh, what you want to do is, first of all, make sure you have the, the official offer from the other team, okay? And make sure you you talk to the person that you're going to be joining their team with and say, how do I go about, ask them for, for you know, advice. How do you switch teams? And maybe they'll take care of it for you. Maybe they'll, they'll sit down with your boss as well to make it happen. Otherwise, it can be an HR nightmare. And you might want to get HR involved uh, as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, and before you go to the other team, make sure that you you have a deployment document uh, and plan in place so that the person replacing you or the tasks you currently do in your current team are easily passed on to somebody else. Yeah. Kind of like giving a two week notice. Okay. Uh, next up, Jenny wrote, uh, Hey Chris, Hey, I'm getting my real estate broker's license. What course would you recommend uh, to build my company? Yeah. There's a guy named, I think it's Simon He, H-E, on, on Udemy that, that is amazing with real estate stuff. Uh, let me do a search on him here. Let's go to Udemy, real estate, Simon. I think he's a, a Stanford guy. Yeah. Yeah, that's him right here. He's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he, he's he's the best teacher on the planet when it comes to, to, uh, to real estate uh, Evan Kimbrell taught a course in as well. Evan's uh, one of my favorite teachers on the planet as well. He teaches about entrepreneurship. He's great. So check out Simon He if you want to take real estate courses. Yeah, he's a good guy. Okay. Oh, Luca. Awesome. So Luca is going to join Zoom right now if you guys have questions about AI. So let, let me actually open up Zoom right now and, and I'll, I'll bring on Luca if you guys have questions about uh, artificial uh, intelligence. Awesome, excellent. And Luca, you know it's the same Zoom uh, address as, as always. So let me open this up here. And while I wait for you to join, uh, what I'll do uh, is I'll take other questions uh, from, from, from people here. Launch meeting, okay. Cool. And I will, I will wait for you here. Okay, let me get to the next question. All right. And then Fabrice wrote, hi from Mauritius, Chris. Hey, how are you? You got to meet Ren Veer. He's in the chat here as well. Find his name, look him up on, on LinkedIn because uh, he's also from, from Mauritius. He's a great guy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on to uh, T who, who wrote, uh, Chris, would you say it's not a wise decision to quit my job to pursue acting? Yeah. I would try to do both. I know it's hard. Um, if location is not an issue and you're already located in an area where you want to do acting, <clears throat> I would stick with your full-time job and do it on the side. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when it comes to should I quit my job or not, what I always recommend to people if you're starting a company on the side is don't quit your job until the, this past six months of revenue 
from your side hustle, whatever it is, is greater than your entire annual salary. And that's just to be conservative. And, and of course, you and I both know, we all know that if it's three months worth, you'll probably quit anyway. And be careful with seasonality. Never, never quit the company you work at to do your own startup if you have one good month. Because it might be because it was a seasonally strong month of December or November, the holiday shopping season. And I see Luca here. Okay, Luca, I'm going to uh, let you join here. And uh, once I see you there, uh, I'll, I'll bring you in. Oh, here you are. Okay, good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to uh, Zoomy and we'll get Luca in the house. Luca, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. I'm looking Excellent. <laughs> I, I have to, you know what I'm gonna, about to do. I have to do it. Okay. So Luca, his name is Luca, <laughs> Luca Anison, Luke Skywalker, Anakin Skywalker. He's a big guy as well. And in our AI course, we, we had this as well, of course. Luca is a big guy, man. He's like six foot a million. I'm about six feet. So I had, had, a step, I had to have a step stool uh, in place uh, when, when we were teaching together. How are you, man? Very well. Just finished with my client. Uh, sorry for the t-shirt. It's uh, currently washed. So oh, the AI uh, shirt. Oh, it's all, all good. Please. Yeah, yeah. All good. All good. Excellent. Excellent. So, so how's, it, how's it going, man? Yeah, pretty pretty well. Like I'm trying to finish a lot of stuff because like it's summer, everybody is going on a holiday, so yeah. a lot of clients just want to finish a lot of stuff just before it. <laughs> awesome. Why, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself uh, and and what you do uh, when it comes to AI and all that stuff. Yeah. And and, so, and and by the way, if anybody has questions, sorry, ask your question. Of off, I'm awful. I, I anybody has questions here. As okay, well, good. So. Everybody, ask questions if you want about AI. Uh, we got a real treat. We got Luca in the house. Go, please go on. Yeah. So I, I've been in AI for past uh, six, seven years in IT for more than 10. Uh, and currently, like I work for many different companies, like from smaller to bigger startups, uh, started my own uh, startup and, and a product and sold uh, one, of, one algorithm and currently building something on the side. So I can show you actually like uh, some of the chat actually yeah. start uh, discussing the plugin for uh, for shops and stuff like that. I can I can share the screen and show them yeah. to, uh, like a small small portion of what you can build with AI. And yeah. right now I'm helping companies basically uh, do the same with yeah. their teams. Yeah. So by education or by engineering. So yeah. yeah. And by the way, uh, here's what I got yesterday: a plate from Google. Oh, um, nice, dude! Bring, yeah, let, so, let me see it, man. Yeah, so Google sent me yesterday this, uh, showing me that, Woo. like, a uh, machine learning expert. <laughs> nice, dude. That is awesome. Nice. Very yeah. cool, man. I, I love it. I love it. Nice, nicely yeah. done. Nicely done. That's yeah. incredible, man. Incredible. Dude, can, can I ask you a question? Of course. When you are at my house, you showed mm -hmm. my, my son, Andrew, and all of his 19-year-old buddies this mm -hmm. unbelievable product that you developed. Can you show that or, or not yet? Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can, can, I can, I can. Can, do you mind demoing it right now? Share your screen. This is gonna course, this uh, is gonna blow you guys away. Okay, L Luca's an incredible Luca. Show it to us, please. This is a game changer. Yeah. So uh, I can I can show you two different products actually. Yeah. The, like uh, the, one with what would they say? The, uh, oh, show the YouTube, you know? the, the YouTube one first. Yeah, yeah I'll show and, the and then, one. And the other one. He's a rock star developer. He he's brilliant and i'm so humbled that that i know him and grateful that that we we partner on this recent thing yeah but you this is gonna blow you guys away so let me find some youtube video just to prepare it yeah. um yeah just for sake uh, yeah. so we don't search it yeah uh, like yeah. and yeah of course if you have any questions regarding yeah any... yeah and, and while you're getting it set up to share with us uh so luca uh was the head of engineering the head of ai actually uh, and engineering yeah. at a company that Google bought recently, um, so it's a it's a big exit, which is nice. Yeah, but this 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 thing he's about to show you guys is insane. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but but I am excited about it. Yeah, yeah it's it's fine. Like um, currently, um, I don't know which which version is on my computer, so uh -huh. I don't know if it's the newest one. Uh huh. Uh, but yeah, so like basically. Uh, you have you can open any YouTube video. And by the way, uh, after I showed it to you, we are currently open on Netflix, on the Disney Plus, on uh, Prime, and basically any video that you like, uh, you can search now. That's insane. So, yeah, sh yeah, show us what it does. I'm excited. Yeah. So uh, basically, you can go and 
right here is the interface and you, you can search from there or you have this icon here and let's say I like this top um, and what the algorithm will do is basically select the okay user did this and let's let's search for for that kind of a pattern or the specific like stuff which you can buy That's and amazing. you can go and perform like a like a search for a specific pattern or like this is an identical so yeah or if you like let's say I like this this guy what what he wears let's try to find that and um, yeah so basically this is a demo um, data so it's not a real data mm -hmm. well it's a real data you can st still purchase that but it's not production uh, server so for example let's I like this one and I can go straight to the shop and buy it and uh, Right now, the store like 150 brands actually signed uh, signed their data to us. So we have like uh, uh, Bershka, Pull&Bear, uh, we have Timberland, uh, Nike, Adidas, like all those, uh, like Puma, uh, like all those uh, like bigger brands actually uh, signed their data to us, and uh, the the data like from UK. That you can basically go in, in any store buy that. That's yeah. incredible, man. That is j just amazing. I, I love it. I love it. When is this going to be commercially available? Uh, end of July. Like uh, we have a couple of things to polish, and like for example, right now, yeah, you can go and perform only gender search, and of, of course, everything is done with users. We have right now one hundred and plus users that are currently using this product, mm. but it's a beta, like closed beta test. Yeah. Uh, version where people like just testing it out with us mm -hmm. directly mm -hmm. so we can make sure that it's actually performing on pair with their expectations and like you can actually search with the materials and stuff like that and what other like you have one AI algorithm that's basically performing the search then the other one like let's say we have users that does do not click immediately on the top hmm. they scroll a bit and then click Hmm. And what we do is basically, let's say like this, What because I did it, you see this pattern right here. Mm -hmm. Even though it's better match than, for example, this, mm -hmm. for me, for my account, it's going to be here. And mm -hmm. why? Because like algorithm is immediately recognizing my pattern of using this mm -hmm. and recommending me uh, those items a bit lower because that's how I use this app. Yes. And if I like this or like basically like or dislike something, that's going to be taken into account as well. And if I open this, it means that I'm interacting additionally, so recommendation will take that as, as well into account. So AI is yeah. constantly learning from me uh, in the backend. That's incredible. So it's a plugin, right? Like, uh... yeah. Okay. So you uh, right now, like um, you have you have a plugin, mm -hmm. but there will be a, like a standalone website, which if you go to inspire dot uh, get inspire dot co. Um, basically that's going to, uh, only load like a just plain, uh, plain, uh, website, mm -hmm. but, uh, in the long term, you will have like, um, option to go through brands and, uh, like uh, TV yeah. shows and others and basically search immediately from that TV show. So you don't have to uh, go for plugin, but you can go and directly get this, uh, from here. That is unbelievable. Now, I saw it went to a certain clothing website. Will it go to other websites too? Like, would oh, it yeah, like yeah. So I said that this is only a test. Like, we yeah. have 150 yeah. websites in the production right now. Right. And those are all TV shows uh, from all that. Very cool, man. I, I love oh, yeah. it. And if anybody has questions <clears throat> for, for Luca about this or any AI uh, questions, uh, uh, please go ahead. But this this is unbelievable, man. Nicely done. Nice. Show us the other one too. Oh yeah. yeah. So this is like um, um, this is just a fun project. So it's uh, basically when Chris and I recorded like an AI course. Uh, one evening I had like a spare time and I just had the idea and said let's let's program it out. So basically, based because everybody is speaking about uh, like um, LLMs and uh, text generation stuff, uh -huh. I built like um, uh, an algorithm that. Take, uh, connects what would people from the past uh -huh. say uh -huh. if they were to to see the today's news, like today's world. Hmm. 
hmm. and to see that through the glance of uh, of like people from the past mm -hmm. and uh, famous people, obviously. So what this does, basically, you can go and let's say it's called it's what would what would they say dot com say dot com yeah what would, uh, they, what would they say that what would they say, say dot com. com gotcha yeah uh -huh. so for example for this one like ex prisoner face uh, headwinds as job seekers even blah, blah blah. So basically, you see that here if I go to this one, uh -huh. this is a regular news from today. Uh -huh. And I see that uh, Adolf Zucker, uh, like unemployment after prison, you say, well, in my time, we had a thing called uh, personal responsibility and so on and so on. Ray Kroc then, from McDonald's, eh? Yeah. And so basically he is commenting on top, uh, replying to him. I, I see your point, but let's not forget that everyone deserves a second chance and so, stuff like that. Like everything is AI. Like you have 97 AI bots interacting with each other. And everything is random. Like uh, I who build it, I don't know what's going to happen, which yeah. is really fun for me. Yeah. And like if uh, a, a Carnegie, for example, uh, this is a classic example of a system failing uh, those who need it most. And then Walt Disney answers on uh, to him, like replies, "I understand your point," and so on. So. <laughs> That's uh, cool, Basically, man. And, and yeah. I remember when we did it, we did like uh, Abraham Lincoln and others too, and they talked just like oh, yeah, they yeah, talked yeah, from yeah. that, that have, time. That. Very yeah, cool, you have man. that. And also, like, if you go to likes and dislikes, likes and dislikes are also done by AI. Like, Nikola Tesla, like, like this post. <laughs> yeah. Like this news. Nice. So, it's everything is determined by AI. Uh, so, cool. That's awesome, yeah. man. I, I love it. I love it. Got a couple questions here. Okay. Of Thanks for sharing that. Very cool. All right. Let, let's, I'm going to read uh, Manas's question first. So, Manas wrote, uh, Hey, Luca, hope all is well. Can you please tell me some alternatives to DID Studio? Uh, because the fact that we can make images talk any moment is fascinating, any tools. So, Luca, if you want, talk about and show DID first uh, and then talk about alternatives and explain to people what, what DID is. Great question, uh, Manas. Thank you. Yeah, the, DID is actually covered in the course. Uh, so, that we covered that tool. Hmm. Um, so, I don't know. The, uh, like, there are a couple of alternatives, but I always forget their name. I can actually yeah. uh, send that somewhere to you and yeah. then you can give it do you want to, do you want to show us did's website yeah sure yeah. uh let me let me open it yeah and if you want you uh, can explain what it does too yeah yeah so let me share my and this again. is this is an ai product yeah so basically what they did they allowed like kind of um avatars to interact with certain audio mm -hmm. and basically you can go and let's say create a video uh -huh. okay. And then you can provide like their avatars, uh, like uh, generated by AI, or you can choose and add your your image, for example. Hmm. And if I add like, uh, let's let's see if I can add my own image. Yeah. Uh, it's the okay. Oh, come on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. You you don't have to if it takes too long. But but I, m I remember you you added one of me. I think the issue was it was a, a different voice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, oh, it, that's uh, that's um, uh, uh, what what was the name? Yes. Uh, so, so basically, the, the way this website works is you can upload an image of you, uh, yeah. and it will talk like it's you. Oh, yeah. I, I yeah. uploaded my friends, but like here is my uh, myself, like same yeah. stuff. Yeah, not perfect yet. Uh, no. Yeah, do it again. Yeah. It's not bad, actually, dude. That's pretty damn good. That's better than the, that's better than a demo of me, man. That's awesome. <laughs> and then you do you just type in words for it to say. Yes. Okay. And, and you, but you, you, you've got you've got you, you got your earphones on now. That's why it doesn't we can't hear. It. That's all good. Though. Yeah. Very yeah. cool, man. That but is like for example, yeah. you have those video avatars like they they provided, uh -huh. uh, and and they are much much better. Yeah, that's one of the the, the the yeah. That one's included. It's so interesting. So I just saw the new Indiana Jones movie, um, six out of ten. But but I love indie. And what they did was um, they did exactly this. They used AI. It's scary how good it was. The AI that is. They have one scene from the new Indiana Jones movie where Harrison Ford is in his late thirties or early forties acting, um, and it it looks identical to him. And they used AI for this uh, as well. And the, the way they were able to do it was because he's been in lots of movies in the past. They took all the old movies and just used AI to overlay on his face what he was saying. 
and you wouldn't know the difference. It's unbelievable. And it's yeah. only a matter of time, I think within a few years, that we're going to see motion pictures um, with actors that are no longer alive. And I think what Hollywood studios are going to do is they're going to create their own actors, IP or AI based from scratch. So don't have, they don't have to pay them 10 or 20 million bucks a, a, a movie. Harrison Ford made 10 million bucks for, for the latest indie movie. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. And of course, there's a lot of ethical issues too when it comes to to deep fakes, uh, et cetera, uh, with that. For those of you that use TikTok, I'm sure you've seen the, uh, the Tom Cruise deep fakes as well. It's a guy who, it, it's actually AI uh, uh, generated completely. Um, it's pretty um, cool. Looks like we lost. My, my fiance entered the room, so I had to turn off oh, the camera. All good, man. All good. And congratulations on your, your upcoming wedding as well. Yeah. Thanks. Very, very <laughs> cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you will be yeah. there. <laughs> I'm going to come as well. By the way, you guys think I teach all this MBA stuff, but MBA stands for married but available. I'm totally <laughs> kidding. That was awful dad humor. That was terrible dad humor. That's not true. This, this stays on forever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Christine, my wonderful uh, wife, you're watching. I'm kidding. I love you so much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very mm. cool. Yeah. But yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Let, let's see if I got any, any more questions. And if you want. Yeah, we, we it, have a couple. We have a couple. Yeah. Uh, yeah let, me, let me go through them here. All right. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, what database would I recommend for storing a vector embeddings? Yeah. Uh, Pinecone. Okay. That's, a, is yeah. that, that's an open source free database like MySQL? No, it's, it's a product. It's a product, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for storing image images, vector embeddings? Is that what that is? Vector right? embeddings. Vector embeddings that you can search uh, like uh, later on, like build a chatbot around it and stuff like that. Okay. Pinecone. Very cool. Yeah, Pinecone. Very cool. Uh, next up, uh, Gamar wrote uh, I've used ChatGPT and it's mind blowingly scary. Uh, to create a cover for a book I'm writing with prompts or write a sample story for me or correct them or make them sound more interesting. Lot, lots of fun. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, Luca, why don't you show us a, a demo uh, of um, uh, image, uh, image-based generation like Dolly 2 or, or Mid Journey. Mm -hmm. For those mm -hmm. of you, like, so many of us know we can use ChatGPT for text-based AI. But you can also use uh, the company uh, that ChatGPT was founded by uh, called OpenAI to generate images too uh, in a product of theirs called DALL-E2, D-A-L-L-E2. Um, so if, if, yeah. you, if you want to, you, you, you can demo that if, if you want, just show people. I can. Uh, let, me, yeah. let me just open, yeah. uh, like, uh, open the yeah. Discord. Yeah. Uh, okay. So... And there's two main products while you're doing it. There's two main products people use online mainly for, for images. One is called uh, Mid Journey. The other one's called Dolly. Dolly. And there is yeah. a stable diffusion Okay, as well. that's right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 Cool. But it's for more advanced users. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So for those of you that, that are interested in using Mid Journey, which is a cool AI product you can use for free for images, you have to use Discord first. Discord is like Slack. And then once you sign up for a Mid Journey account, then you can do it here within Slack. Um, cool. Yeah. Sorry, it's always it's always Discord. There is no Slack. Oh no no no! no. I, I meant sorry. Discord's like Slack. <laughs> That's what I meant. Dude, I, I, dude, I it. dude! I the older I get, the better I was. I had a senior moment there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Uh, like you can use uh, Mid Journey for free, up to two hundred images generated. Okay. After that, you need to pay. And I don't know if they changed it to be that, that quota per month or in general, like free account. Mm. Uh, I need to check that, but it's ba basically before was like you use, uh, you use for 200 and then you need to pay. Mm. Uh, the mid journey. So, okay. There is, a, there is a DALI and mid journey that I'm going to demo right now. In my opinion, DALI always generates better quality images, mm. uh, with a less, work around the prompt. So they made a really user friendly interface regarding AI prompting. While Mid Journey can generate a variety of stuff mm -hmm. with a more control over it. Mm -hmm. But you really, really need to care about what you write as a description. Mm -hmm. So like a, oh, as a prompt. And as you can see, like here, we experimented uh, like a, with a different prompting, like, let's say a person is seated comfortably wearing and uh, 
electrode cap connected to a, a large monitor by series of wires and stuff like that. So you can see basically weeks. Uh, so what, what I do, you can see now my process. Whenever I post something on LinkedIn, always with that post will go a mid journey generated image. Mm. So this was for the latest post uh, posted uh, like uh, today. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, we go around and, and experiment with many, many different like prompts until we reach something that actually works for for the post. Hey, can you explain and, what what that means? The uh, V one two three four. Uh, which one? Just any what, what that means, like the upscaling and, and versions below each. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, I'll generate something now, and then sure. I'm just showing the, the sure, process. Yeah. So let's say that I would like uh, to generate something. Uh, I would like to generate um, a robot teaching humans how to drive cars. So this was the most basic prompt. You can see that you can go much, much more in the granular detail of what you like, like for example, Nikon style, specific camera style, which like a direction of the camera, you can, you can do all of that. We are teaching all of that in the course, but basically, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be uh, like, um, a good prompt, like engineered prompt for me journey. And now while I'm speaking, the, as you can see, it's going to generate, uh, um, this, image mm -hmm. but you can see that this image is actually consistent of with four different let's say parts and this is how it goes into what why we have like a u1 u2 u3 and so on and a v1 v2 and v4 so always when you generate a normal prompt it's going to generate four different variations of that prompt mm. or four images and now you can see that okay we got we got some images Hmm. Let's say I like this one, but it's not as perfect as I'd like to, like it to be. So what you have for that, you can go and V stands for variations. Hmm. And I can say, okay, I like this one. So it's a good direction. Let me generate four additional versions of that hmm. specific image. So what uh, Midjourney will do, it will basically send this image to AI, hmm. to the algorithm in the backend and say, okay, use this and the original prompt to generate four different versions of it. So basically, yeah, that's, that's going to um, ge generate like those versions. Mm -hmm. And what's going to happen, let's wait a couple of more seconds. Um, and I can see that this was, this is much better than what originally I got. Mm -hmm. So I can say, okay, cool, I like this one. But now it's connected to other free. So how I, how can I use this in any blog or I don't know, LinkedIn post? So let's say I like this one. So I can use U1 and U stands for upscale. Mm. So upscale. And now my journey will suddenly, like in a couple of seconds, we don't have to wait that long, will upscale this and give me the original image that I like Amazing. in much better quality. Uh, and let's say that you would like this prompt to work in, I don't know, this is still not high resolution, obviously. Mm -hmm. But let's say you like this to work in more uh, informative, like, uh, environment. So what I can do, oh, um, I don't see it because of this inter interface. Oh, it's 16, oh. you want to make it 16 by 9? Yeah, but uh, like I don't see. Huh. Uh, okay, let me delete it some. Okay, like this. Humans, um, how to drive a car. And what what I told it now to do is basically okay. Use this prompt as I did, mm -hmm. but use aspect ratio or dash dash AR in uh, sixteen nineteen. Right. So what's going to happen is basically uh, it's going to generate like a wide images now in that aspect ratio. Hmm. So which is going to be much closer to the to the original like a uh, full HD. Huh. Yeah. That's awesome.
Very cool. It, yeah. While this is going on, let's see if we have more questions. Oh, yeah. Let me, let me read here. Um, Adiposi uh, from Nigeria wrote, Luca, can you please tell why AI fumbles with generating human fingers properly? Oof, uh, I don't know if anybody knows that. Like, it's a really weird behavior. Oh, I saw a picture of Trump. Somebody did a picture of Trump uh, at a, at getting arrested. It was a BS uh, image generated by, by AI. But he had six fingers. If you yeah, look like, closely, I, I, got, I, I got saw like that. Ten fingers, ten fingers and stuff like that. Like, it's not really perfect with those details. Huh. Uh, but if you ask me why, I don't really know. Like, in most cases, people don't really know that. So I like this one, the, the second one. So let's upscale the second one. And you can see that already it's much higher detail. Mm -hmm. So I'll upscale the second one. Mm -hmm. And let's wait. And bam. That's and open awesome. in browser. And I can like send a link to this that's, in a second. That's wild, man. Uh, yeah. And now we have a full HD image generated by AI. Yeah. Incredible. Just incredible. And so th this was using Midjourney. Yes. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. What, what about Dolly? Do you want to you want to show Dolly? Uh, I can. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, yeah. And then uh, Gamar wrote: um, uh, the, the less people, the less traffic. The quicker the responses are. Yeah. And I think you you mentioned that if you pay to use uh, Mid Journey, you get faster responses, right? Yeah. Okay. You you get faster response, but um, huh? Yeah. Very cool. Very good. All right. And, and while you're setting that up, let me see if there's any other questions. Um, Adiposi wrote, "Yes, also the AI images that circulated some days ago about Elon Musk marrying a robot wife call, <laughs> caused a stir." Uh, LOL. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I was playing that that video game Detroit Become Human. And ev by the way, everyone's got to play that game. If you have a PlayStation or Xbox or a PC, play this game called Detroit Become Human. Um, it basically it it it's about the future, obviously, um, and uh, 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 androids and they're lifelike. And in between, as each segment of that video game loads, you're asked a question, right? Yeah. And and you could see the live responses globally. And one of the questions, Luca, when I was playing that game, uh, Detroit Become Human, is would you ever date an android? And 75% of the couple thousand people that were online at that point in time when I was playing said yes. Scary. Yeah. Yeah. I actually have a funny story about that. Like, uh, So I have a close group of executives that are uh -huh. like a kind of a um, group with me uh -huh. learning about the AI. Uh-huh. And two, three days ago, um, I sent to that group, like, and actually, you know, they're executives. In most cases, they're not playing video games. Right. So I, I sent a questionnaire about, like, who played or who heard about Detroit Become Human. And, like, 95, 96% of the, <laughs> those guys, uh, girls as well, I said no. So I never heard about it. And a gamer from YouTube uh, upload a, uploaded a video uh, Chat GPT playing D Detroit Become Human. So every decision was made by Chat GPT. Wow! It, it, amazing video. Like it's uh, it's. Uh, I think he's going to upload like uh, additional parts of that series. Yeah. And what uh, when I sent that video to to those guys, um, like fifty something percent actually bought the game and played for the first time. Wow! Wow! So right now you have like a. Crazy amount of executives in my group not doing the job. <laughs> it's a, it's it's one of the best video games I've ever played. Yeah, it it's, is yeah. one of the best. Definitely. Yeah, and it's amazing when you play it. Everybody has a different ending. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And it's there great. are really rare e endings, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I well, if people just have more questions, please. yeah, sure, yeah, absolutely. So this is the Dali. And the difference between DALI and uh, Midjourney, so, okay, both of them are commercial products, so people are making money out of them. They have subscription-based models. And as I explained before, like DALI have better quality outputs. And um, one thing that people need to note is DALI is more expensive. 
Mm-hmm. So what you, what what you do is basically you go and instead of paying subscription based, you pay credits. So one generation, one edit, one everything that I'm going to show right now costs one credit. And that's so, point, that's point six pennies per image or something. No, oh something like that actually yes mm-hmm. something like that. So yeah, I can buy credits and you can say that one hundred and fifteen uh, credits is fifteen dollars. Mm. Okay. So you can go and buy always uh, in increments of that 115. I don't know why why that number, but yeah. Hmm. So that's like this will amount like amount of actions that you're going to do uh, with Dali. So edit, generation, uh, removal, stuff like that. Hmm. And like let's say that I'm going to download the, the the use the same prompt as I did before. So let me just copy from the mid journey. And uh, I'm just go- going to copy until this R because like that's not supported by uh, by Dali. And I'm going to okay, I didn't write correctly. No, no it, matters. Yeah, it, it it knows. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so there are a couple of ways that you can you can generate images uh, using Dali, and you can see that this is my history. So I experimented with it a lot. Uh, I actually used my image here as well. But yeah, so <laughs> it's close to Tesla. <laughs> yeah. Ah. For some reason, this, in, this interface. Hmm. Uh, okay. And DALI is also made by OpenAI. So if you pay subscription like Pro or ChatGPT, you do not get any credits for DALI. Oh. So you still need to pay hmm. extra. So if you have Pro version of ChatGPT, 20 bucks per month, hmm. you still need to pay for DALI. So it's two different products, two different sub- subscriptions. And uh, let's say I like this one. And you can go here and you see that immediately, yes, it's not the same as, as previously, but this is much better quality image. Mm-hmm. And what I can do right now is I can generate variations as you did with uh, Mid Journey. So it's the same functionality. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there, then you have like a two different things uh, that are unique to uh, to the Dali, and I I won't do this image mm-hmm. because it's a boring one. But let mm-hmm. me use my cat image here. Mm-hmm. So I generated a cat, uh, and let's say I like this one, and I can go and click edit, and you have two options to remove some parts, which is called in painting. Mm-hmm. And let me generate um, bandana. And what the AI will do will try to fill in the gap mm-hmm. of the image using that another prompt that they use. And you can go and do as complex prompts as you like to mm-hmm. fill in the gaps. And I just removed ba- basically part of the image. Okay, it didn't get it, but okay. Yeah. Maybe if you, uh, maybe is, if you did it and put smile or mustache or something, and this is this, uh, is, this is called in painting, and then there's we'll show out painting in, in, in a second too. Yeah. So I just generated a smile. So let's see about that. And while that happens, let me open like some image. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. There is oh, a smile. Wow. This, this is creepy. Wow. That's a scary smile. Okay, so this is called uh, in painting. What what yes. about what, what is out painting? So I can I can add oops, uh, I can add an image. Let's say uh-huh. I would like this one, and I'll upload a house. Okay, I'll upload the house from Zillow. Mm-hmm. So free marketing for Zillow, and. What's going to happen, you have two images, mm-hmm. one that we generated by AI, another I just uploaded here. Mm-hmm. And you have this option right here. Uh, let me just confirm this image. Yes. You have option right here to add a filler. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to place it in between and add mm, a front yard. Okay, and then what's going to happen, it will connect those two images with an additional prompt that I just added. Like you can go and generate much 
like a more complicated from this and more detailed one, like mm -hmm. a front yard with a swing with whatever, mm -hmm. and it it will try to fill in the gaps with with that prompt. And it's a really interesting. Like uh, for example, you upload the Mona Lisa, and oh, uh, then you go. So it connects the two, yeah. Yes, and like for example, you have variations here as well, like. I don't know what this one, Through a but tr truck like truck. this is a really cut off image, so it's a bit difficult for it to generate. Mm -hmm. But basically, I can go and accept this one, and mm -hmm. now it's connected. And what I can do right now, I don't like the transition, so I go and erase basically uh, everything around the cat. I can er erase like a cat itself. Um, mm. And I don't care if I go over it, but basically what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to take another one and then mm, my computer is lagging today, so uh, and generate for the same thing with with additional like a uh, transition. So it's not like a really cut off. Hmm. That's wild. <laughs> if 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 so, if you if you. This costs you about a penny for each one. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's much better. Oh. It, it looks like sort of a truck in the middle. What about the variations? Yeah. Uh, this one is potentially the best. Cool. That's pretty neat. And, and so we recommend that if anybody uses LinkedIn and, and creates your own posts, to use either Midjourney or Dali to create yes. incredible thumbnails. Yeah. So the Midjourney does not have any, like, um, um, Out painting? Like a, no, 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 like a, a watermark or something like that. But if I download this image uh -huh. uh, and open it, uh -huh. let me open it. Uh, you see that it's not in the same screen, so let me bring it back. Yeah. Uh, you see this one, like day detail right here in the corner, huh. like these colors. Yeah. That means that it's a blue uh, watermark of uh, the DALI. So this means that DALI was generating this image, generated this image. Hmm. So if you like, you can go obviously in a, a Photoshop and remove this, but basically, hmm. uh, this means that it will, it was generated by, by DALI. And Mid Journey does not have a watermark? No, no. Okay. So the, the problem with me journey and all some, like, uh, it's less problem with Dali right now, but mm -hmm. it's still, it was a really huge issue mm -hmm. with like, uh, people stealing arts, uh, -huh. uh and like when they trained the me journey originally, it took a lot of like, uh, open source images and as well as paid ones sometimes. And when you generate like some style, you have like mm -hmm. a signature in the corner of some author still generated by AI because it was trained on that. Hmm. So it, it can cause the issue and just make sure that when you generate like something with AI, uh, like see if any watermark or anything is, was generated as well. Yeah, so, yeah, that makes sense, makes sense. What about copyright? Like if, if, if you were to try to get a picture of say Michael Jordan created yeah. uh, in Dolly or Mid Journey, w would it do it or not? Mm, you, can, you can use it. Will it, will, it gener will it generate Michael Jordan's face or, or, or it doesn't do that? So it really depends on like, for example, me journey will do like, and, but it won't be as realistic as photo, photo, like a uh, shoot, for example, mm -hmm. it will generate like a Ma Michael Jordan in some setting or cartoon or whatever. Mm. While Dali, I didn't try specifically for Michael Jordan, but when you try to generate those famous persons like a, a Trump or I don't know, Joe Biden or whatever, politicians especially, it's immediately blocked. Oh, so, interesting. Huh. Yeah. So yeah. you can't generate with DALI. They are really cautious yeah. of like uh, yeah. that because yeah. it can be used in, in wrongdoings. But in general, like if you're generating something with um, MidJourney, you can get some results. Interesting, yeah. And I also want to caution everybody on, on the webcast, um, be careful when you're using chat GPT for articles uh, as well, because we don't know what the copyright laws are yet. Uh, yeah. And, and my, my son, Andrew, who's uh, at Berkeley, uh, this is him when he's younger, obviously, but whenever he submits a paper, um, the professors have access uh, to AI software to find out if it was generated, the paper that is, with AI. Right. So and, and be careful, anybody applying to universities, don't use 
AI to write your essays because they might be able to search to see if, if that's how you wrote it. So I recommend using ChatGPT for just idea generation. Yeah, yeah. And be careful also because, as I mentioned earlier in today's webcast, ChatGPT is quite often confidently wrong. And I say that because it gives you this incredible response with beautiful parallel construction, only three sentences per paragraph, etc. And you, you think that it, it's correct, but you have to double check the data. And I found so many inconsistencies and mistakes using ChatGPT. Now, um, when you use uh, uh, Bing Chat, the great thing about that is that you get resources uh, that are shown. Do you want to show Bing Chat? Yeah. Yeah. Or, or do you have Edge? Yeah. So, so while Luca lo loads up, if you guys have questions for Luca, please type them now about, about AI. So I, I was just yeah. reading about the uh, questions. So oh, you were? There okay. was a question. Uh huh. Uh, can you please tell tell why AI fumbles with generating? Oh yeah, yeah. that was a, a read about. Mm -hmm. uh, um, okay, um, what is the difference between lang chain and llama index? Okay, so first off, like what is lang chain and llama index? It has the same like idea ideology behind it. Basically, connecting a lot of apps around LLMs, like mm -hmm. for example, ChatGPT or GPT, and uh, you have like an option to let's say use uh, a prompt and then send that prompt to Google and connect it to other apps and then basically use that interchangeably and you basically create kind of a agents, people call them agents, that they interact with apps and then you have a possibility to use LLMs or large, large language models that generate text and chat with you. So it's kind of an interactability with your traditional apps that you have. And what is the difference between Langchain and a Llama index? So a Langchain is a, 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 so if I'm not wrong, I don't know if they created um, in the in the meantime, but it was a it was a library for Python that you can use and then basically uh, interact with people, and you can go and for example use a one prompt not people, sorry, but LLMs, and you use one prompt to send another prompt and basically you stack prompts together to get kind of a chain effect, basically prompting in a sequence. Mm -hmm. And then you have on top of that kind of a application interaction with it, like a Google no Notion and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And a Llama index is more advanced than that, in my opinion, like right now at least. And if you had to choose between those two, I would always go with Llama index. Okay, cool. And what is a large language model? Oh, yeah. So whenever you have like, okay, first of all, what is a lang language model? Language model is a, a way that we humans basically choose the words in a, set, a certain setting between certain people. Like right now, while I'm speaking to you on live stream or when we recorded a course and, and or when I'm speaking to my fiance, I'll choose different words different sequences of words, different sentences, and different topics. Mm -hmm. And it's based on the context, it's based on the knowledge of, of interaction with the, the certain people. And in, like, for example, uh, English, you have 160,000 unique words. Mm -hmm. And for example, when I say I, I have a different probability, chance to say another word after that when I'm speaking to you. Mm -hmm. Because you and I know like certain topics, you and I know each other in a certain way, and when I say I, potentially love will be the next one. And for example, with, with you, the next probable word would be AI. I love AI. While I'm speaking with, when I'm speaking with, to my fiance, it would be I love you instead of AI. Mm. Okay. So probabilities of a sequence of words that's going to happen in a certain order. And you can replicate that with computers. It, it's not a new paradigm, like it, it's been done for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And everybody's using uh, like a language models every single day, but you don't know that. Mm -hmm. And what's that? It's your keyboard in a phone. Mm -hmm. So when you type, you have like a certain apps and then you basically type certain words and then like above it, you have a couple of options. Mm -hmm. And that's a language model. Mm -hmm. And that's like la your language model while you're using that keyboard. Hmm. on the phone. Hmm. And large language model is basically a huge neural network, huge algorithm and it takes a lot of text, hmm. a lot of knowledge, let's, let's call knowledge, that's books, blogs, uh, scripts, 
yeah, uh, a lot of text, Wikipedia, articles, everything, papers, mm. and tries to use those as a reference to build those like sequences of words, like what's next probable word to happen. Mm. And that's basically because of the amount of computation, amount of text, that's why it's called large. Mm-hmm. But in general, it's a language model. The size of it is making it large. Okay, makes sense. Cool, thanks. Do you want to give a quick demo of, of Microsoft's version of ChatGPT or their chat, Bing Chat and then yeah. and then Google's Bard as well? And maybe we can talk about so the I don't know if it can go to Bard okay. because I'm in Serbia. Oh, it's not uh, available in every country. Okay. It's not yeah. available in every country okay. because for the GDPR reasons in in um, like in Europe it's really tedious to get it. Okay. Huh. Uh but let me check if, if they unlocked it. Yeah. Cool. Now, for those of you that... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is it locked there? It won't let you. Yeah. yeah locked. Cool. Locked. Okay, cool. You want you want to show show Bing chat? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 And, and the great thing about Microsoft's uh, Bing chat, um, well, first of all, you have to use the Edge browser, which sucks. Um, yeah. You have to download it. But it, it shows you all the, uh, the sources, too. Yeah. And when we compared... Like uh, Bard with the Bing Chat, Bard was supposed to do the same, but mm. it's not doing the same. It's not the same. It's still missing yeah. references. Like, and when you go to Chat, like it's built on Chat, uh, not Chat GPT, but GPT four. Mm. Uh, however, it has much more restricted things that you can do with it because it was created as a way to interact with internet and not generate text. Mm. So people will go here and basically have the option to like either be creative or be precise. Like if you're doing research, go with the pre- precise mode and let's say uh, compare uh, performances, stock performance uh, of Apple and NVIDIA. That's so cool about that tab feature. Huh. Oh, yeah. For autocomplete. Nice. So... What's going to happen now is, um, ideally, I don't know if we are going to get results, we'll see, but basically it's going to search for those information and you can see it actually extracted information about Apple and NVIDIA. And you can see like for here, oh, okay, Apple current stock value is this. And like... Um, it's got sources. Yeah, oh, yeah, I yeah. Like, and oh, you I get like store- a lot of sources. And you have you can highlight this and let's say um, structure it in a table. Oh, right, we got that as well. Cool. I did. Well, let me. Oh, that's cool. Huh. Uh, in a table uh, and compare last performance of last 10 years. Let's say it like this. I didn't write structure correctly, but it's fine. It will now, yeah. That's, that's wild. And like when you're building a presentation or something like that, like you can use this to speed up the whole process. Um, what's it doing? Fine, what, what's it doing in the background there? Um, in, the, in the background? Like two of 30. Is that oh? Where do you see that? Oh, that, that it's it's right here. It's it says two of thirty. Just let, oh yeah yeah. yeah. Okay, so one session, hmm. one session has thirty messages hmm. or thirty responses with uh, chat being chat. So if your session is larger or longer oh. than thirty sessions, it won't respond any, respond anymore. So you had to clean or clean click a new topic, and then start to, from scratch. Oh, and that that's a bit sucky because like if you didn't finish the whole job, you still need context for the next one. You don't have it, so you need to start over. Now with ChatGPT, there's a limit of like what twenty or thirty or something like that per. Uh, so per it's a, it's twenty five per three hours mm. to use, uh, but for only for GPT four. Like mm. if you're using GPT three point five, it's still like uh, yeah. unlimited. Uh, and obviously, GPT three point five is less. Mm-hmm. Like um, it's not that great. Mm-hmm. Uh, in most cases, and also like you can do it for free, so you you don't have to buy anything or pay anything. Mm. But like I always recommend people to go if you're using that daily or try to get as bad 
as good value as possible, use 20 bucks and get, get something like a subscription mm. uh, because your result will be more consistent and, and much better like in accuracy. Cool. Very cool. Thanks. Okay. One last question for you and I'll let you go, buddy. Thank you. Uh, Adiposi wrote, from your experience building AI tools, can you share any tips on how to plan for fast increasing server storage demand? Mm -hmm. um, so regarding the models, like the model will be constant in the size. So you are basically training on a data set that potentially local on your mm -hmm. like a sour storage or whatever. And then uh, you basically uh, train the model on it and upload that saved version of the model, which has a consistent like uh, amount of space de dedicated to it. Like it's four to eight gigabytes in RAM and also like um, four to eight, uh, like depends on the size of the model, but it's mm -hmm. it's around that size. Uh, but you don't have to worry about that if you're relying on APIs that you, we currently have. So if you're relying on API, you're just paying the price. You don't have to have headache about that. You're just building a software as you were as you would for general purpose. Uh, however, like for the Inspire, like the product that we are building for search, uh, like we have our own model that takes like a lot of time uh, to train and also like a size matters in that sense. Uh, and for that, like you you can use elastic demand for elastic uh, storage on, size on amazon oh, aws uh, or it, anywhere on amazon or aws or gcp like we are gcp native mm, yeah, google cloud yeah 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 mm. uh, we are there complete stack is there because like uh, we started because they have the best ai models for vision mm -hmm. uh, out of those vendors and we started with those we just stay there so yeah Cool. Excellent. Well, Luca, thank you so much for your time. Uh, really appreciate it. It was a pleasure meeting you. The only issue was that you're like 8 million feet taller than me. So I, it, during the course, you'll see I'm, a, I'm on a step stool. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm a really small person in real life. Yeah. All right. All right, bud. Great, great to see you. God bless you. And, and I'll see you soon. And regarding the emails we sent back and forth uh, today, just let, let me know. I'm going to send out that, pro, that yeah. promo. Okay. Thank you. All right, guys. Yeah. All right, man. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for great questions. All right. And on. nice meeting you. All Bye. right. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. All right. I've learned so much from Luca. Very cool. All right. Let me get through the rest of the questions here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find where I was. All right. Here we go. All right. Give me one second. All right. Next question is, uh, uh, Cody, how are you? Uh, Dan Sanchez. Hey, Dan. Uh, wrote, I'm keeping an eye on the VIX. Uh, when it gets above 80, back up the truck and buy. Uh, but any similar thoughts on what to do when it's low? Yeah. So for those who are not familiar with the VIX, it's a volatility index. And volatility means fear. Okay. And the VIX is, is a volatility index uh, that was created by the Chicago Board of Exchange back in 1990. And what it does, and I'll show you the chart in a second. What it does, it measures what the options volume is for the S&P 500 over the next 30 days or so. And if it's high, there's fear, which means you buy the market. If it's low, there's not much fear out there. Okay, let, let me show you how, how it works. And it's very rare that it goes above 70 or 80, but when it does, it's going to feel like the end of the world, but that's when I usually back up the truck and buy stocks no matter what. So let me go here. And what we'll do is once you go to finance.yahoo.com, uh, I'm going to, this is me buying time. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to enter in VIX. Okay. And I'll show you the chart here real quick. All right. So it only goes about 70 or 80 once a decade or so. It's only happened actually twice. Uh, one time was back uh, in uh, uh, 2008 when we were within 24 hours of bank machines not working. And the other time uh, was um, uh, was was during, during the COVID crisis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom way, way out here. Okay. And I'm going to hide my face uh, in, in the corner here. So, you, so I can show you this chart and what it means. Okay. Uh, and I put my reputation on the line, what I'm about to tell you. So again, the VIX was founded back in 1990, but it's only gone above 70 or 80 twice. Okay. Again, one was back in the fall of, of 2008 over here, over here. <laughs> and, and the other time was, was recently during, during the COVID crisis. Okay. So right, right here. And actually intraday here uh, in March of 2020, it actually reached above 80, surpassed this level here. 
So when the VIX is above 70 or 80, okay, that means there's tons of fear out there. And when there's a lot of fear in the market, meaning options volatility, that's when the market usually crashes. Okay, and so when the VIX is above 70 or 80, no matter what, I buy stocks and it feels uncomfortable. And when it happens, it'll happen again one day, I promise you. But when it happens, when the VIX is above 70 or 80, it's going to feel like the world is coming to an end and you're going to say to yourself, oh my God, I'm crazy if I buy stocks now. Well, that's when you got to buy. Because if you buy stocks and everybody else is buying stocks, there's not that many incremental investors that push the market higher. But when the VIX is above 70 or 80, like it was back here in the fall of 08 and like it was here in early 2020, that's when you when you buy stocks and that's when the market bottoms. And really unemotional investors like Elon Musk back up the truck and buy tons of shares as well. In fact, from a behavioral finance perspective, what Elon Musk did in March or April, and this is all publicly disclosed, what Elon Musk did in March or April of 2020 was he bought a ton of shares in Tesla. Okay, uh, And that's when the market bottomed, right? When the VIX was high. He's very unemotional about business and you have to be as well with stocks. Then what he did was he sold those shares in the fall of 2021, about six weeks before the market peaked in January of 2022. Okay, so only use the VIX to help you understand when to buy stocks, right? So I would look at it and if the VIX is above 70 or 80, then that's a great time to buy after you do your own research, obviously. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay, uh, next up, uh, uh, Denver wrote, uh, Chris, thank you uh, for adding so much value at my pleasure. Thanks to, uh, uh, to, to Luca for adding more value uh, than I do. Uh, and then you wrote, I'm from Australia and I want to launch an AI product in the United States. Is there any advantage in being physically present in the USA to address uh, the USA market? Absolutely not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what, what, one thing that the pandemic taught us is that we can all work, go to school, uh, et cetera, online. You don't have to be physically located in any region of the world to launch a tech company. Yeah, yeah. In fact, in the Bay Area, one of the big issues is the price of labor is ridiculous. Yeah. Okay, uh, next up, Omar, uh, what are your thoughts on... Oh, okay, that's a, a question for um, uh, on, on no coding. Uh, and and when, I bring, um, uh, when I bring Luca back onto the call another week, we'll, we can go through that in a lot of detail. Thanks. Okay. Jenny, you're most welcome. Okay. All right. And Manas wrote, thank you for everything. You're, you're most welcome. Um, uh, and then Jennifer wrote, uh, hey, Chris, uh, thank you for the comprehensive uh, introduction. You're, mo you're most welcome. Thank you for everyone for your patience with me today. Again, that video at the beginning today was a little bit too long. In hindsight, I should have just shown the promo video uh, instead of the, uh, the, the, the long first lecture. Yeah, my apologies. Uh, you wrote, uh, please, I'd like to know what weighs a hair and skin brand will benefit uh, from AI. Yeah. So with, with your hair product, your shampoo products you showed me, um, in terms of creating packaging for, I know it's the next step for you, what I would do is I would use uh, Mid Journey uh, or I would use Dali, similar to what we showed you earlier in today's webcast, to create the branding, the logo for your product and the branding as well, the sticker to put on the outside of, of your package. You can also use it to help you um, with your presentation, trying to raise capital as well. You can type in a chat GPT, uh, prepare a, a 10 slide presentation, three slides per page about my product, paste details about your product, and it can do that as well. And in the third semester of the, uh, of, of the MBA program, uh, there's a venture capital bootcamp to help you with that as well in terms of raising capital and your go-to-market strategy, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, Liesl wrote, I'm now a hypnotherapist. Uh, I'd like to work with entrepreneurs to overcome their fears, improve focus, and get into flow. Could I share tracks uh, for your students uh, uh, to help and get feedback? Um, yeah, if, 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 if you want, yeah, by, by all means. What you can do is, since you can't paste websites here in, in YouTube, YouTube will, will strip it out. You can, you can spell out your website if you want to. For example, instead of saying CNN or Fox.com, you do uh, www space D-O-T, the website name, D-O-T, and then C-O-N. Okay, great. Excellent. Well, I know there's a bunch more questions. Uh, I got to wrap it up now. If you're in my Silver MBA program, uh, I'll see you uh, in about five minutes uh, on our weekly Zoom call for Silver students. That's a weekly call from 10 to 11. And for those of you in my Gold or Platinum program, um, at 11.20 today, we got a two-hour uh, Zoom call 
Uh, and for those of you in my platinum program, looking forward to doing one-on-ones with you later on today uh, as well. God bless you all. Thank you so much, Luca, for, for coming on this call as well. I miss you, brother. Um, and uh, again, there's not going to be a webcast next week or the week after, but there will be one uh, on Thursday, July 27th, where I'll be doing uh, the webcast uh, from the school that we built uh, in Rwanda. So God bless you all. <laughs> Click like and subscribe and all that good stuff, um, only if this was helpful to you guys. Uh, and again, I will not start a webcast by showing a long lecture like I did before today. Uh, but um, this is week 236 and I still make mistakes. God bless you guys and I'll see you soon. Thank you. Oh, I'm going to end this video like I always do uh, with a short uh, interview uh, with Steve Jobs that I licensed from the Silicon Valley Historical Association uh, that, that is life-changing. Thank you again and God bless. When you grow up, you tend to get told that the world is the way it is and your your life is just to live your life inside the world, try not to bash into the walls too much, uh, uh, try to have a nice family life, uh, have fun, save a little money. Um, but life, th that's a very limited life. Life can be much broader once you discover one simple fact, and that is everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. And you can change it, you can influence it, you can you can build your own things that other people can use. And the minute that you understand that you can poke life and actually something will, you know, if you push in, something will pop out the other side, that you can, you can change it, you can mold it, um, that's maybe the most important thing, is to shake off this, uh, th this uh, erroneous notion that life is, is there and you're just going to live in it, versus embrace it, change it, improve it, make your mark upon it. Um, I, I think that's very important. And however you learn that, once you learn it, uh, you'll want to change life and make it better because it's kind of messed up in a lot of ways. Um, once you learn that, you'll never be the same again.